this is lecture 11. So in this lecture, we'll be talking about one of human nature's finest uh, attributes, and that is our tendency to help others. Um, so in this part of the lecture, we'll be discussing uh, some of the theories of why we help others. But before we do so, let's start off with some definitions. First of all, a definition of pro-social behavior. Well, pro-social behavior is basically just another word for helping behavior. It's any act performed with the goal of benefiting another person. So anything you do to benefit someone else. And pro-social behavior or helping behavior can take many forms. And one specific form is altruism, something that you probably also uh, heard of before. Well, altruism is a very special form of pro-social behavior. It has the same core attributes, namely it's an act um, that you perform to benefit someone else. But there's two extra layers to uh, altruism. Uh, first of all, it's very important that you have no intention to gain anything for yourself. So you do, you don't you do not have an intention to gain any profit uh, for any positive outcome for yourself. Its solely uh, purpose is to help others. So that's that's one special addition to altruism. And the second one is that you will perform this behavior even if it has costs for you. So even if it's not only not bringing you anything, but but it may even involve some costs for you. Um, so this difference between pro-social behavior and altruism has been discussed a lot by psychologists, by philosophers, and also by people, uh, characters from my one of my favorite sitcoms, uh, namely Friends. And I will now uh, want to uh, show you uh, a, a part of a small film clip in which um, Joey and uh, Phoebe discuss the difference between altruism and helping, and specifically if there's something uh, like a, a selfish good deed. Is it possible to do something for someone else without gaining anything yourself? Please take a look. <laughs> I'm sorry, Phoebes. I just, you know, I just wanted to do a good deed, like, like you did with the babies. This isn't a good deed. You just want to get on TV. This is totally selfish. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What about you having those babies for your brother? Talk about selfish. <laughs> about uh, well yeah it was a really nice thing and all but it made you feel really good right yeah so well it made you feel good so that makes it selfish look there's no unselfish good deeds sorry yes there are there are totally good deeds that are selfless uh, well may i ask for one example yeah it's you know there's no you may not <laughs> that's because all people are selfish are you calling me selfish are you calling you people? <laughs> yeah, well, sorry to burst that bubble, Phoebes, but selfless good deeds don't exist, okay? And you know the deal on Santa Claus, right? I'm gonna find a selfless good deed. I'm gonna beat you, you evil genius. <laughs> hey, Joey, when you said the deal with Santa Claus, you meant... That he doesn't exist. Right. Mm. So why do we help others? Why do we show pro-social behavior to others? Well, there are several theories out there that explains our helping behavior. And one of these theories, uh, there we have it again, is evolutionary uh, theory. Evolutionary psychologists argue that we tend to help others definitely when they are related to us. And this is uh, called kin selection. Kin selection uh, means that we show helping behavior towards people that are genetically related to us. And that makes evolutionary a lot of sense because we want to protect our genes so we also want to protect our offspring and basically anyone that is uh, uh, related to us uh, genetically so that's why we are very helpful towards our our offspring our children but also towards others that are uh, genetically related to us and uh, there's quite some evidence actually that we are even uh, that we are more likely to help others that are related to us that are blood relatives uh, compared to uh, to friends for example um, that are not uh, genetically related to us and especially when it comes to life or death situations so there's quite some examples anecdotal evidence but also some some experiments uh, done with hypothetical scenarios in which people are asked, so are you more likely to rescue your nephew from a, fire, from, from a building that's, uh, that's on fire than uh, compared to, uh, to a colleague, for example, then we see that we are more likely to, to help uh, others that are genetically related to us. So 
that's basically one of the, um, the core principles of evolutionary psychology is we want to protect our genes, we want to make sure that we reproduce and that, we, uh, that, that, that our genes live on, so that's why we protect people and help people that are genetically related to us. That's one explanation, but evolutionary psychology also offers explanations for why we help people that are not related to us, because we do, so, we do that as well. Um, and one of these uh, explanations also offered by evolutionary psychologists is that we help others because we would like to receive help in return. So based on the reciprocity norm. And we already discussed this, that when we show certain behavior towards others, we expect that same behavior in return. And we also oftentimes get that. So uh, let's imagine that a friend of yours asks you, so I'm moving house, can you please help me move some boxes and, and move some furniture? This might not be something that you ideally would like to do on a Saturday morning, but you think to yourself, well, of course, it's very nice to help a friend, but also maybe in the back of your mind, you're thinking to yourself, well, I actually also have to move houses in half a year or so, so then I can rely on that friend to help me because I also offered help uh, uh, in, uh, b beforehand. So the reciprocity norm is actually one of the reasons that also evolutionary psychologists uh, argue that we help others so we can help get help back. Um, and uh, this is good for us. This is good for, for our well-being, and it's, uh, it can also mean that we, once we offer help to people, that they can offer help to us in times of great need, and maybe even when our survival depends on it. Uh, the third reason why we also offer help to strangers or people that are not genetically related to us uh, is uh, a, an idea of group selection that's also described in your book. And that means that uh, on the bigger scale, so if you zoom out a bit, we know that, that uh, groups of people that are helpful towards each other have a higher ch a chance of surviving over a long, uh, long time. So people that are very selfish and don't offer help to others, they actually have a higher tendency to become extinct and, and that group has a lower chance of surviving. So even though uh, helping is sometimes costly to the self, on the long run, it's oftentimes good for the group. So it's actually, a, in a way, a sort of a social dilemma, something that we uh, discussed in a previous lecture. So evolutionary psychology came up with several explanations for why we are helping, but there's more theories out there helping us to understand why we help others. And uh, one of these theories is uh, the social exchange theory. This theory is also part of uh, lecture uh, 10, actually. It's uh, chapter 10 also in your book uh, on relationships, but it comes back in this lecture, in lecture 11 on helping. And according to the social exchange um, theory, um, basically what we decide to do uh, stems from sort of a, a, a weighing scale from benefits and costs. And what we decide to do is sort of the outcome of what offers us the most benefits. So when it comes to helping, there's oftentimes costs involved. Sometimes helping can be dangerous for us, especially if someone is in need. For example, if you have to run into a burning house, of course, that's very dangerous for you. It might actually be painful or uncomfortable for you to help. And at the very least, it will likely cost you time. So there are some costs involved in, in, in helping. And if the costs are too big, we will, according to the social exchange theory, decide not to help. But also ha helping has a lot of benefits as well, and that's also recognized by the say, so social exchange theory. Uh, for example, there's oftentimes rewards uh, when it comes to helping uh, that are linked to our image. Uh, helping is, is also a social norm. So we receive social rewards when others see us helping people. So if, you, if, uh, if a person sees you offering help to a person in need, we will definitely get praised. So you will get applause, you will get likes on social media if you talk about it, and you might even receive a bonus or it might even offer some, some possibilities when it comes to your career or, or other opportunities. So offering help, and that's something we all know, it's good for our self-image. It's actually actually also good for uh, how we feel. So we also, it gives us a good feeling if we help uh, others. Um, and that's actually also the third explanation, that helping helps us regulate our emotions and our moods. Um, so uh, there's um, actually two different courses, how our mood affects uh, our help, uh, choice to help others. So when we are in a good mood, um, we tend to help others more, and this has also been experimentally uh, demonstrated that after people coincidentally, 
actually not coincidentally, was placed by the researcher, uh, find a coin of like 50 cents, that uh, after that they have a higher chance of offering help to uh, someone they come across a person in need. So if you are in a good mood, you're more likely to offer help. So that's basically a feel good, do good explanation. Um, this is also great because if you offer help, your good mood maintains. So it helps you to maintain your positive mood that you're already in. On the other hand though, being in a negative mood might also induce helping behavior. And that is because offering help can increase your mood, can, can lighten up your mood. So, and this is actually an explanation that sounds like the complete opposite, but it works in that, that sense as well. Feel bad, do good. So that means that if you are in a bad mood, offering help can be a way of, of getting in a more positive mood. Uh, especially if you have a bad mood because you have lingering feelings of guilt, you feel guilty towards a person, for example, if you then help that person, that can, that can sort of be a, a, a perfect way of restoring uh, that guilty feelings and, and feeling better again. So overall, helping is good for our moods. Uh, even if it's a good mood or a bad mood, it will help you become uh, yeah, in a more positive mood. And also it can help us cope with different emotions. And what I want to add to this is that it's also good for our self-image. So if you offer help to a person, this can actually be some sort of an ego boost. You can feel better about yourself, like the person you are. You become more self-aware and you start considering yourself as a good and decent human being. And that's, of course, in the end, what we all want, right? We want to feel good about ourselves. So if you suffer from, from you know, bad self-esteem or you feel bad about yourself, offering help can also be a great medicine for that. So overall, I can say it's good for your well-being. Um, so, so far, we talked about pretty you know, selfish reasons to help. We help others because we want to protect our genes or we want to get something back or you know, it's, we want to lift our own moods. But that's not the only reason we help. And that's according to the empathy altruism hypothesis. We also sometimes offer help because we feel empathy for a person, because we feel bad for a person. And then we will attempt to help this person purely for altruistic reasons, regardless of what we personally gain. So the moment we feel empathy for a person, we feel really bad for a person, we want to offer help, regardless of how it makes us feel. And that's basically sort of the answer to the dilemma that Joey and Phoebe were talking about. Is there something like a selfless good deed? Yes. The moment you start feeling empathy for a person and you deeply care, then you want to offer help regardless of what it, what, what's in it for you. So these are basically, there's basically two paths of, of uh, showing helping behavior. If you see another person in distress, you can... Uh, yourself also start uh, experiencing distress. So that's the upper uh, roots, basically. So the moment you also start experiencing distress, you feel upset, anxious, disturbed, then you probably have egoistic reasons to offer help. You have a motivation to reduce your own distress. And then you show behavior uh, that is basically, um, uh, you show helping behavior because you want to reduce your own distress. And on the bottom hand, you can also sometimes view another person's distress and not feel any any distress yourself. So you perfectly find yourself, but you're only, you know, feeling distress for the other person. And then you experience empathy. You have feelings of sympathy and compassion for another person, but you're not personally bothered by it. Then if you then offer help, you are, have an altruistic motivation to reduce another person's distress. You will still show helping behavior, but then it's for altruistic reasons. So as, uh, you know, as an example of this, let's imagine that you are in a plane, an airplane. And you're sitting next to a crying baby. You know, you have people that are super disturbed by that, which I can fully understand. You know, it's pretty difficult to sit next to a crying baby, especially if you know this is going to be a very long plane. Um, uh, we, lots of hours that, we're, that I'm stuck with this baby. So maybe you're trying to, you know, calm this baby down because you're still, you're, you yourself are very bothered by it. So then you offer help. You start maybe playing with the baby or you try to, to, uh, to calm it down a little bit or help the mother or the father that is taking care of the baby. Then you're helping for egocentric reasons. But some other people, like myself, I'm also a mother, so I have three kids, I know babies cry. If I see or hear a crying baby, 
I uh, am not really disturbed by it personally. I'm probably just thinking, oh, I'm happy it's not my own kid. But I will feel empathy for the caregiver. And I feel like, oh, this is such a hard situation if you're in a plane and your baby is crying. So I will also offer help. But then it's more for altruistic reasons because I just want, want this situation to calm down. I want this baby to be chill and I want the parents to be chill as well. So then I am offering help for more altruistic reasons. Um, so, in a nutshell, summarizing all this, why do we help? We help to protect our genes, we help to get something in return, to look good in the eyes of others, because it makes us feel good, and because we care. So, basically, there are so many reasons to offer help. Helping is good for everything. So, you probably think to yourself right now, well, we will be helping all the time, right? That's not the case, because there's, even though helping is so good for us and it's, it's basically good for everything, there's oftentimes situations that we do not offer help, even though we should actually offer help. And we'll return to this question in the second part of the lecture.